great to have all of you in. Uh, once again, welcome all of you for today's webinar. Um, the webinar topic that we're going to be having today is, uh, or discussing today is um, everything practice management. So we're going to see a few things that you as a you know, legal practitioner need to be uh, following, um, have as a few obligations to fulfill and uh, a certain um, criteria to uh, complete or to adhere to in order to have a, a smooth practice and at the same time be compliant with uh, all the law society guidelines and uh, how you could achieve it um, by yourself, uh, either by using manual methods um, or by using um, a technology-driven platform like ULaw or any other software. So since uh, I am from ULaw, I'm going to be walking you through based on how you're using, um, how you can utilize the program well to fulfill all these obligations and uh, yet have a very um, a smooth and efficient practice uh, throughout your uh, uh, professional obligations that you need to be fulfilling at this time. Um, now, like I already said initially, um, this is a one hour, actually a more, little more than one hour, one hour, 30 minute session, but I'm going to be trying to uh, make the best use of one hour that I have available with me between 11:15, uh, 11:20 to 12:20 today. Uh, we're going to be seeing first 30 to 35 minutes of these slides. Uh, I'm going to try and talk as much as possible, and uh, and then the last 20 to 25 minutes, I want to present new law to you as a platform and show you how. Um, the navigation into this program, um, I'll show a little bit of navigation and also show you how everything in the program works uh, from what we're going to be discussing in the next few minutes. Uh, like I said, this is also a CPD session that we generally deliver to our professionals. Uh, it's a good one hour CPD professional with some credits that people across Ontario, Alberta get. Uh, so we decided to take this topic. Um, uh, as it's a very extensive one and uh, it will be much useful when you uh, graduate or when you decide to start your own practice or if you're even helping um, or assisting uh, someone who's a sole practitioner um, or a small hour at a small firm. Uh, but ultimately, uh, this, this everything practice management topic comes to help uh, irrespective of the role you play. Um, so let's take a quick look at the agenda here. Uh, so the topic uh, covers uh, right from client intake to uh, various subtopics like file management, financial management, how do you manage your practice, which is business management, and how as a professional you're able to manage your personal time, your uh, um, your professional time overall. We're going to see how these things help you while using a platform like Yuba. And we're also going to see um, uh, from the perspective of running a business or a firm, uh, what are the obligations uh, and criteria you're expected to meet um, by law society, uh, previously called uh, LSUC, which is now, uh, since both the campuses are in Ontario, I'm using LSO, so which is Law Society of Ontario. Um, uh, what are the obligations that they have laid out uh, for you to adhere and uh, you know, take it serious and comply with. Um, it's pretty easy. I know the terminologies are a little, uh, you know, too or too much to um, take it, but it is actually pretty easy if you break it into what you see in front of your screen. Uh, as right from the time when you intake a client to closing a file, this could be at the maximum ten steps that you have to follow. Um, when you're in taking a client, you do it religiously with either a PDF um, file that you send them out, um, which is 
it's called an intake form. So right from a client intake uh, where you send them either an intake form or to how the technology is evolving these days, we have portals, we have uh, maybe um, uh, web services where uh, people have web forms uh, put on their website or some like to even um, keep WhatsApp as their business um, uh, mode of communication. Uh, some like to use Instagram or LinkedIn or, you know, there's several platforms today uh, that people would like to use to communicate or to network. Uh, of which you choose a method and uh, you stick to that method or try to stick to that method um, and uh, you have to perform a certain, um, um, let's say, steps to complete client intake, which includes, let's say, right from the time you send out your client a PDF form to, um, you know, fill in their details, fill in their um, uh, preliminary details so that you can intake uh, them as your client and uh, do a little conflict check to see whether uh, there has been any confidential information that is going to be a conflict with any other client or any other party, additional party to the client if there are several parties in a file. So uh, do a do a intake followed by a conflict check, verifying whether. Um, there's a conflict to the parties here in the, uh, you know, in the file. And um, also making sure that you record all the details in the uh, tool that you're using, like UDOC, or uh, manually if you are maintaining a file, a physical file, or an electronic file like you have on your desktop or your drive, etc. So, uh, step number one is definitely to do a client intake um, following whether a tool or manual method and having a conflict check done and sending out the client um, uh, an agreement whether you're going to be agreeing upon uh, to uh, start with a retainer before you uh, get started with the work or to collect a retainer before you get started with the work, let's put it that way. Um, and if you have to collect a retainer, whether you have a trust account, first of all, uh, whether have you obliged with opening a trust account as per what law society says, because you cannot collect money prior to you starting the work into your general account. So mostly if you see all of these uh, legal professionals, uh, when they start a new practice, um, they uh, the first thing that they do is visit a bank and uh, register themselves as a uh, lawyer or a paralegal, starting a practice, this is the practice name, provide all the documents, and they open two accounts. Typically, they open two accounts, at least minimum one, which is a general account, but a lot of them uh, want to also have a trust account separate so that they don't confuse the money uh, into both the accounts. So anybody who wants to pay money or if you want to collect payment prior to you starting work, that money goes into your trust account. So you have to ensure that you are following all the obligations that Law Society has laid out for you to start a trust account. Uh, so that you can collect the money before you start the work into trust account by giving them a nice retainer agreement. Now, all of this is available in the program right from the time where you intake a client. So you can send out the client downloading a client intake form, which is also available in new law, or the latest technology allows you to use the new law client intake portal and you can actually directly send a link to the client from ULaw and allow your client to submit a form online and have their details recorded into the program directly. I will be showcasing that to you shortly. But right from the time you intake the client to doing a conflict check to um, um, drafting a, a retainer letter or an agreement, all of these templates are available in the program. So you don't have to literally think about, okay, how do I create, how do I create this um, uh, letter? How do I um, proceed? What are the 
details that I have to include. Nothing. There's nothing for you to typically worry about because we have done our homework adhering to what law society wants, and we have implemented all of those in the templates that we have in the program. So all that you have to do is go into the respective sections and download these documents for you to uh, conduct your practice smoothly. So now what happens when you draft or when you download a retainer agreement and give it to your client, ask them to fill in the form uh, or sign the agreement and agree to pay you a little retainer amount so that once they pay you, whether it is in cash or check or email transfer, whatever is the method of payment, you need to deposit it into the trust account immediately. If it is email transfer or you know, electronic fund transfer, it doesn't matter, it's directly getting deposited. However, if it is cash or check, check needs to be deposited. Either you use mobile deposit or you walk into the branch and give them the check and ask them to deposit into your trust. Or if they give you money or cash when they come into your office, you keep the cash safe and within 24 hours, you walk into your branch and deposit that money into your trust account. And then you immediately record it in the client's file in the program saying, client A paid me $500 today. So you just have to go into client A, the respective file, and say retainer deposited $500. So that's how it works. Uh, it's typically um, doing things simultaneously, but when you do it simultaneously, there are going to be very minimal chance for you to miss out on any transaction that happened that day or that week at least. And you're going to have a proper track record of all the trust accounts and general accounts, uh, all the money that you've received or collected and all the money that has gone out. So using a proper legal accounting system like EULA allows you to tweak all these templates. It allows you to utilize the time well. It allows you to record the details into the program directly. You don't have to do it in a spreadsheet or in a Word document and then keep a track of it and then later on come back into the office and do it. You can access EULA from anywhere because it's a cloud-based solution. You can, you, you can access it from your home, your office, your school, uh, on the way, in your commute, because you can use the app on your phone. You can go into the program uh, from your web browser, uh, wherever. But all that you need is your username and password. Have it handy always and then log in from anywhere and try to do the work simultaneously. So uh, it will look like you're adding a minute here and there, but it's worth it. You're gonna be end of the day saving that time, breaking your head later, one week later, trying to recollect or reconcile who paid you that $500, what did they pay you for, whether it's a disbursement, whether it's for the legal fee, you know, things like that. So to avoid such confusions or scenarios, we always recommend our people using the program to record such financial matters immediately, okay? So it doesn't stop there, but it also goes one step ahead where we say that, hey, you've collected retainer, but suddenly the client finds a better lawyer or better professional, or they decided to not continue the case for some reason. You know, you, you, you never know what happens. Uh, somebody walks into your office, fills out the client in tech form, pays you a $200 retainer, but the next day they, are, they change their mind. What do you do uh, to keep yourself uh, complied, to keep, make sure that you have done the due diligence of even uh, returning the funds back to them, right? So you first of all send them a non-engagement letter. That is also available in the program. So this is part of the client communication, which is very important. When you intake them, you have to make sure that you are aware of all such scenarios, right? So you immediately send them a non-engagement letter and then refund that $200 from the same method of payment where they are in from the same account where they paid you into. If they paid into trust, refund from trust. If they paid you into general for some reason, 
paid back from general. Most likely in such scenarios where you have not even started the work, there won't be any chance where you've received the payment into general account. So it is very clear that you have received the money into trust. So it will go back from the trust account itself, give them a non-engagement letter and mark them as not your client in the program. And you can even put them as your ghost client if you want to or discontinued client if you want to. So these are certain things that will make you um, a, a, a little more organized person um, and uh, also compliant with the first stage of law society where it says uh, a client or a contact management compliance is also given by the, um, is also laid out by law society. Moving on to the next part, we're talking about professional obligations. Uh, and expectations uh, and that you have uh, set to the client and uh, information that you provide to them. Uh, where do all these get covered? Uh, these are mostly there in the retainer agreement. When you draft a retainer agreement, you need to keep in mind all these points that you see here in front of your screen. Uh, the idea behind having a retainer agreement is to communicate to the client what are their responsibilities and what are your responsibilities and uh, how often would you like to communicate with them and what is the channel of communication, whether you prefer a phone call, whether you, you are doing an email, um, and the nature of the matter. What, what, how do you intend to work, uh, whether you are going to be doing it in part or whether you're going to be completing the entire matter and then billing them, um, uh, whether it's in a phase or stages. So all those needs to be laid out, their responsibilities, your responsibilities, the course of action, whether uh, it's going to be, like I said, um, in stages, you're going to be billing them or completing their work, or it's going to be one flat rate uh, completing it, whether you're going to be billing them in billable time or hours, you, you will need to mention all those under the retainer agreement and ensure that the communication is very, very clear from the day one so that you, your risk, the risk that is associated with, um, uh, you know, the retainer collection or, uh, you know, starting the work before uh, collecting the retainer. Rather, you, you are somebody who's going to be uh, doing work based on um, uh, word of mouth and, uh, you know, you're going to be collecting the money only after you finish work, which is into the general account, making sure everything is going to be recorded in a document, which is called the retainer agreement. So you are going to be ensuring this uh, right from the intake to completing the due diligence, which is the conflict check, to accepting the retainer, issuing the client a retainer agreement, laying out everything that is uh, going to be uh, carried out in this next few days or weeks when or months, depending upon how big is the file, whether it's ongoing client or whether it's a one-time client, whether it's a small file, big file, medium file, you have to schedule the course of representation. And once you start the work, whether you have uh, recorded the time, uh, so recording the time, coming to that point now, after let's assume you've collected the first five steps is done. Let's assume the intake was done, the due diligence where the conflict check is done, uh, accept, uh, issuing the retainer agreement and accepting the retainer into trust is done, and you're all now ready, pumped up to start the work. So when you're starting the work, what is one thing that um, comes to your mind? Uh, is it something where you just randomly go and start work, or is it something where you as a professional will be recording each and every six minutes that you're working in the program or rather you're working on their file which you want to record in the program. So there are typically two types of billing here and um, some people, uh, depending upon their area of practice, for example, real estate lawyers or um, let's say uh, an accident benefits, um, a SABS, um, uh, personal injury lawyer, uh, they all work in different style. So a real estate lawyer is so, um, it's so simple billing for them is in uh, flat rate. 
they only tend to do a flat rate billing. They open the ULA program, they create a client, they open a file, straight away go and uh, build a client for $1,000 for legal fees as flat rate, and then the disbursements follows. So it's a combination of flat rate and it's a combination of um, uh, disbursements merged together, put in a file called invoice or in a document called invoice and sent to the client saying, hey, this is what is the work I conducted on your file or matter, and this is what is my bill to you. So here's my, uh, here, here are the details. That's where it starts. And then it goes on to uh, collecting, uh, completing the work and collecting the money, putting it either in your trust account and transferring the money from trust to general, because now that you've completed the work, you are free to move out the money from trust to general, or whether you are just directly bringing the funds into general. It totally depends upon what you've scheduled in your retainer agreement. And then it goes on to uh, where you're using all the templates that's available in the program, giving them all invoices, receipts. Uh, uh, you know, if the client wants to see what has happened in their trust, you immediately uh, generate a trust ledger from the program and give it to the client. And, um, and then it goes on whether it, uh, you have a checklist or whether you have um, any other document. So that is where the next stage comes into or the next part of this topic is file management. So you have, you have, you have, we spoke about uh, professional obligations. We spoke about client intake and professional obligations. So now when we are in the file management part of professional obligations, how do you manage a file? Um, is a file separate from a client or how does it work? So typically a client um, is the starting point, that's where you enter the client details, information, and start. But uh, it's not necessary that a client should have only one file with you. It can be that the client has approached you for two different matters, for two different files altogether. So it's two different work that you will be recording under the separate files completely. So uh, making sure that each file is uh, put to the respective matter, uh, forming a checklist, and uh, making sure that you have complied with the checklist, there is no conflict, uh, and everything is in chronological order, uh, which means that you have a file number that is assigned. When you open a file in ULaw, ULaw automatically assigns a file number. Uh, it's, uh, it's, in, um, it's secured, it's organized, and also, you can save the data into the respective files with a third party um, like Google Drive, OneDrive that ULaw supports where you are, you're collecting a bunch of documents from the client like their ID proofs, their uh, retainer letters, agreements, any other copies that you want to keep in safe, you can um, use one of these drives and upload all the documents so that all your electronic files and data are organized under the respective matter or file. And once that is done, you can also, in fact, do personal uh, interactions like emails and phone calls. You can record them. You can put them under the electronic format into this uh, document or drive that you're going to be linking with the program. So it's very important for a file management uh, to have proper records and uh, supporting documents and making sure uh, the cross-indexing of numbers, uh, the file numbers, if you are having maintaining a file number of your own, make sure that the ULaw file number is recorded or noted down on that and vice versa. So that way you are not going to lose a track of any file, but the program also has a, a index or it is called a quick view where you can just simply go in and type the client's name and all the files under the client's name is out there. So, File management is very, very simple. If you follow certain steps that we just discussed right from intake to storing the documents. Okay, so that um, was the file management under professional obligations. Moving to the next aspect of it, very important. This is something that <laughs> is uh, going to be the bread and butter for you all, um, financial management. I know now financial management 
sounds too big to all of us, but just trust me, if you break it down into four or five parts of financial management, um, this, is, this is nothing but just a bank in, bank out, what comes in, what goes out. You just follow your bank, record the payments, and uh, uh, which is uh, rather what you receive into the bank and then disbursements what goes out. And uh, I think you're, you're good if you're able to follow your bank and record it in the program. Uh, technically, uh, in, a, in, a, in a daily basis, but one day you miss it, come, come into the office next day or, you know, you don't even have to come into office if you're using a program. You don't have to stick to the system that is there in your office. You can log into ULA anytime, like I said, and record these transactions. You might get some free time when you're watching your Netflix in the night. So just sit in front of your uh, iPad or your uh, laptop and open ULA and then record all these bills that you got, uh, the timesheets you need to update. Um, any invoices that you want to raise and send to client. Um, you know, you can just move around with the program and uh, take the, take, you know, take all the liberty to do it at your convenience, but do it. That's the point. Um, so when, when I talk about financial management, um, it, it just definitely starts with retainer if you are having a trust account and if you're getting a, getting money prior to starting your work. Uh, and then it goes on to uh, billing to clients, whether it's a billable time, you're recording the time every six minutes, uh, or you're doing um, a flat rate docket. Um, uh, you know, it def definitely depends upon your style of billing. And once your billing is, uh, the style of billing is decided. Go ahead, uh, complete the bills, deliver the invoices to the client with a specified time and details on the invoice. And what do we all do next? Wait for the payment? <laughs> yes, wait for the payment. But if you have money already sitting in trust, why wait for the payment? Move that first. What is available in your trust? Make that yours. Move that from trust to general. When you do that, Law Society of Ontario says you got to generate a Form 9A, okay? So that is something uh, which is a very important document other than the journals and ledgers that you law will be uh, generating for you. So when I talk so much about financial management, uh, what is your scenario uh, or rather what is your role in this scenario? Um, I only think all that you're having to do here is uh, record what comes in and what goes out. Leave the generation of documents to ULaw. ULaw does that. You put the money in, you get the retainer receipt. You put the take the money out, you uh, get a Form 9A, or uh, you get to download a, a trust disbursement journal or uh, uh, or a trust um, payment uh, journal, whatever that you are going to be downloading for your uh, law society records. You have everything available in one click button. But what is it that you got to do is prompt action that you need to take while recording those payments, recording those time and, uh, uh, you know, flat rates, in generating the invoice, uh, having a systematic track of payments, whether any client has overpaid you, whether you have that in trust or general, uh, refunding the overpayments from the respective accounts, and recording all the general accounts. Like, you know, if you have disbursements, if that's something that you have paid from your trust or general, uh, make sure you're recording that and maintaining your bank statements, any receipts, any copies of bills that you have, um, checks, Checks as well, uh, copies of checks, bills, uh, receipts, bank statements. All of these documents are very important. So when it comes to accounting, it is all about maintaining good records of books, um, bills, receipts, duplicate copies. So try and sometimes being old school is not harmful. You know, you could, you could probably keep an electronic form of these receipts, checks, uh, you know, duplicate slips, everything can be in electronic format and, you know, trash the paper. So you could, you could be as efficient as you want, but the, uh, the bottom line of the story is to 
get to recording it in a prompt manner. That's it. So if you see, and if your client today walks into your office and says, um, hey, I'd like to see what happens, what has happened so far in my accounts, you just pull out an invoice from you or even pull, even better, pull out a, a client's trust and general ledger, which is like a one click button from that client's file. You give them saying, hey, this is what has happened from 1st of September. You paid me a $1,000 retainer and I have so far billed you $600 and uh, there's 400 remaining in your trust and the 600 out of which 400 has been my legal fee and 200 has been some filing application or a courier or photocopy, some kind of disbursement. So this is what is happening. You put them together in one document or rather you are puts them together for you in one document and gives it to you so that you can hand it to your client and show them this is your, this is your, this is what is happening in your account. So. Uh, this is what you owe me end of the day, or this is what I owe you end of the day. So preparation of financial statements uh, for your internal purpose or for your client's external or for law society, for the compliance part of it, everything is simple. If your inputs are valid and prompt and, you know, you have a track record of everything. So that's the financial management part of uh, professional obligations um, and continuing a little extension of that. When I was talking about documents that gets generated from the program, it included clients, ledger, trust, um, uh, you know, it, there are five to six documents that are uh, very important to law society and uh, these are asked on a monthly basis, by the way. and. Um, when you generate these documents, there's nothing more to it. They can they cannot be anything beyond it. That's what I wanna would like to say. So um client ledger for both trust and general client um trust and general disbursements journal and receipts journals and the trust and the general reconciliation. There's there are about six documents if you include form 9A which I spoke about 15 minutes ago about transferring money from trust to general you need to generate this form 9A um, including that document there are about six to eight documents that you can generate on a monthly basis with a one click button from Lula. So these are some things that you can benefit by using the software regularly and uh, uh, yeah, so make the best use of what is available and um, moving on to the next one about business management. So it's so far what we've discussed to you uh, maybe sounded a little, um, um, maybe I would say a little too much uh, or too much to take at a time, but trust me, like I said, if you follow your bank, if you follow your client actions, if you follow what uh, people paid you or what you paid out of your bank respectively from trust in general. If you're following certain financial transactions, uh, the data that you're going to be entering in the program is on a daily basis. Um, I don't think there could be any uh, issue there for generating the right documents, including reconciliation is a cakewalk for you. But when it comes to business management, how smart can you act? How uh, how can you um, you know try to be efficient at the same time effective? We've all read this in our management classes: how to be efficient and at the same time effective, um, how to be uh, a professional with uh, doing uh, uh, an audit or to. Uh, do your internal audit when I mean an audit because uh, we all want to make sure that we mock what uh, has um, what law society would do for us. So you want to make sure that you use the right software, right tool, keep a backup of everything, uh, and also make sure you use only uh, secure devices. Uh, when I mean secure devices, um, you could be using an iPad at the same time while you're using a laptop, but 
leaving it all um, in layman's terms, leaving it all um, without passcodes or leaving it open while you're going to grab your coffee or do um, make sure that you're keeping all your you know, devices and your accounts safe and secured with backups, with passwords. Uh, and uh, when you're doing remote access, make sure that um, uh, nobody can easily access your systems, your phones, your uh, any messages that you record for your internal purposes. So just ensure that the business management part of it um, is going to also be uh, you know, compliant uh, with your internal standards at least. So that way, uh, you're being you're you meet the standards of law society guidelines, um, and uh, you're using uh, at the same time your business is being put to efficient use. So um, that is an important part of business management when you're choosing a software, when you're choosing any program, or even a simple Microsoft Excel. Try and uh, put a passcode to the Excel because you have trust amounts or trust clients, details. Um, there could be anything there, right? So uh, make sure that you're following such norms to have everything, uh, you know, in order and uh, you're following the professional obligation even during the business management part of it. Now, uh, Professional obligations for a professional management while you're all in school now, let's say you graduate and uh, you are uh, completing your um, maybe your bar exams and you have got your memberships and licensing and um, what is the next thing that you do? Let's say some join firm, some start firm on your own, some assist, some lawyers, but there's something you have to remember is your ongoing CPD credits. So now, while we are talking about CPD credits, I just want to let you know that ULaw gives one or three CPD credits at least once or twice a month. Uh, you just have to go online, look up for ULaw webinars, ULaw slash info webinars. I can send you all a link maybe through Judith and Shraddha. Uh, you could make use of those free CPDs that we deliver once or twice a month. And uh, that is definitely a requirement for your professional obligation to complete certain CPD hours in a year. And um, also be updated with your uh, membership professional associations, whether it's Ontario Paralegal or whether it's Criminal Lawyers Association or whether it's Ontario Bar Association, whichever is the membership uh, or uh, whichever ones that you're a member with, making sure that you follow uh, the um, practices there and uh, the code and conduct guidelines that they've laid out and reviewing all these case laws and legislations that's being published from time to time, uh, making sure that you are uh, um, professionally managing yourself, um, which is also part of the professional obligation. And uh, uh, I mean, we all know that time management is very sensitive when it comes to being um, uh, just out of the school and uh, starting things on your own. Uh, I think I am every day struggling to get there with my to-do list. So use a program, Use uh, it could be a simple free program that's available online, or it could be if you're using a tool like Eula. Eula has uh, events to-do list that you can uh, update, uh, you can synchronize with your calendar, with your personal calendar, with your official calendar. Um, there can be uh, several things that you can do by maintaining a nice to-do list. Uh, there's no chance that you could miss out on things. And ensuring all your active files are being put on top priority list and uh, having them attended to on a daily basis or at least on a regular intervals when you have to. And uh, ensuring that either it's time dockets or it's flat rate dockets, you are having a track of all of these records. So um, yeah, so time management is very, very important. I think uh, if, if you ask me the order in which Gayatri, I have to be focusing for my business or my practice, I would say time management is 
the top on my list, followed by business management, followed by professional management, and comes the personal management and last financial management. Even though financial management should be your top priority, like I said, if you are able to keep a track of these daily in and out of your bank, I think 70% of your headache is done there because all that you're going to do is come into EULA and record them. That's it. Boom. You're like, okay, you have all your reports in less than a minute. So, but then other things, you have to personally involve yourself maintaining them and completing those obligations, right? You have to sit and attend a one hour CPD session. You have to do it. It's not like it can be done in a minute. A one hour CPD is a one hour CPD. So that's the that's something that will take a little bit of time, but it's worth because you get to complete your professional obligation along with your other uh, commitments. So now, Moving on to personal management, uh, like I said, um, it's pretty important to make sure you're uh, able to strike a, a work-life balance here because once you all become a professional um, as a new entrepreneur or as a, uh, an assistant or coworker on one of these firms, you are uh, probably uh, running out of time always. So you need to make sure that you are able to uh, you know, organize yourself, satisfy uh, the time that is available for you, and uh, at the same time, you are able to uh, work and take your time off and also have a financial success of your practice. Now, uh, benefits of having a practice management, we are almost to end of the presentation, and I just need 15 minutes after that to showcase you all of this in the program. Um, so a little bit talking about uh, benefits of a practice management. It's definitely useful. I've been talking along all through the slides. Uh, first of all, it's very cost effective for you. You don't have to spend too much time doing it all by yourself. It reduces the overhead cost because you don't have to have several people having to work for you, but one practice management solution that can take care of all the other work that you would be assigning to different people. And uh, efficiency level is pretty high because there's uh, very chances, that, very less chances there could be errors unless and until you missed out on any information while putting it in. And um, at the same time, keeping you compliant with the law society of your region or your uh, province. Um, and making sure you can practice from anywhere. That is the best part of today's practice management. Like you law, like I said, which will allow you to uh, practice literally from your couch watching Netflix. So, uh, I, sorry, I'm using Netflix again. I'm, I'm somebody who watches Netflix every other day. That's my kind of unwinding that I do. I keep 30 minutes timer on literally and then I turn it off because it's so addicting end of the day. You sit to watch all those series and keep going on with episodes and episodes. So um, yeah, I, but but I do my, sometimes I get to do my work while watching it. That's the level of ease that the program gives you. Uh, being cloud technology, you can practice anywhere, access your files even out of office. You don't have to rush into office at 8 a.m. in the morning if you have a call at 9 a.m. You can sit, have your breakfast uh, while you go through the uh, files in the program using your uh, any device that you have, but just have your login password handy. Um, while that was about the benefits of having practice management, uh, we already spoke about having uh, uh, matter management, how EULA efficiently allows you to uh, you know, manage matter uh, or files from anywhere, ensuring you are taking care of the file organization, you're able to record the dockets for either billable time or flat rate, you're able to uh, record all the disbursements, whether you paid them from trust, whether you paid them from general, and at the same time, you're able to update all the um, details. So you as a, you as a practitioner, uh, whether you are a, a sole practitioner or a, or a um, you know a partnership, uh, you should be able to understand the state of your practice and make make the decisions 
and uh, ensure that you are uh, taking good uh, steps of what is required from a law society standpoint and uh, that you're also at the same time able to uh, do all those that you need for your clients using a program, um, developing the invoices, developing the, um, you know, the uh, to-do list, developing um, all your financial management requirements, etc. So we are almost to the end of it and uh, talking about the calendar management, I already said Eula allows you to synchronize calendar. If you're using a Google calendar, we can synchronize with your Google personal calendar or official calendar um, and uh, ensuring that all the docketed events upcoming to do and your court hearings and your uh, client meetings, everything is in a nice, a uh, weekly, daily, monthly view that you get to see and also that you're able to download all your forms for court hearing, for your court um, forms, because ULAW generates forms for uh, various area of practices, uh, could be family law, small claims, Highway Traffic Act, uh, which is provincial offenses, landlord tenant board, there's several, um, uh, you know, uh, code forms that's available in the program for you. So you don't even have to log out of the program to get back into the, um, to get a form while you, you are in the program, you can do get access to the code forms and it generates with the information, basic information of the clients. And um, how the program also seamlessly allows you to integrate with accounting um, for, um, you know, the seamless integrated accounting solution that we have. When you enter the information in the client's file, how you're able to reconcile it from the accounts aspect and also generate the documents for law society compliances. Um, now I'm going to quickly show you whatever we discussed in the last 45, 50 minutes. In the, I'm going to try to show that to you on our EULA program in the next 10 to 12 minutes so that, you know, we are going to be able to wrap up at 12.20, as I said. Um, before I move on, I know I've talked too much. Maybe you all want to take a break. Uh, let me know in case you want me to pause for a minute or two, but I'm just going to give you all a heads up that when you're out of your school and you decide to start your own practice or you're joining someone's office, you they don't have a practice management or you decide to do it on your own and you don't have a practice management yet, you all love uh, you to sign up for a free 30-day trial. Just have to um, register from our website, ulaw.io. There's a free 30-day trial that you can make the best use of. We have student pricing, we have new entrepreneur pricing. Um, ULA being a Canadian program uh, uh, for uh, legal practice management solution and being a cloud-based program, um, we are uh, able to cater to sole practitioners, small firms, uh, and they're able to effectively manage their practice from anywhere, right? So it's all under it's as low as $34 Canadian dollars a month. And uh, the student pricing is also there on the website. So if you're a student and you're looking to use the program, you can also uh, take a look at it. You can let us know, you can let Shraddha or um, uh, you know, uh, Judith know about it and we can set up a session for you uh, and set up an account as well for you. So now quickly going into uh, the practice account. So here we are, the practice account. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you here in this class have already logged into the program uh, or have got a chance to take a look at the program, but this is how our program looks. This is the dashboard once you sign in, the landing page, you get to see all the happening information in your accounts over here. Uh, all the recently modified clients, contacts. If you want to see what is going on in each of their file, you can just simply click on the contact card and see what is happening, whether this client owes you any money and et cetera. So dashboard is more like a very, um, you know, like a uh, overall view um, that you get to take while you are 
doing something else and uh, you know that this is what is happening. These are the matters for where you have not raised invoices. These are probably your upcoming to do and this is what is happening in your uh, membership association and things like that. So it's good for an overview and followed by contacts. Contacts is um, typically where your work starts in the program. Remember I said your client intake and et cetera. So under document generation, we have client intake form. You can use a client intake form for generic or you can you, you can download one for your, um, uh, for your family, for your client's family. Uh, it depends on the type of form that you're generating, but these are totally in lines with what law society has. So they're absolutely uh, um, you know, in accordance with the standards. So previously before the client portal and stuff, started, people used to download these forms, send it to their client, or when people walk in uh, to the office, they hand it over to them and they fill it up and sign it. That's how it works. Uh, if, we, if our client's client is using, prospective client rather is using that form to fill it out online, they can just import the upload client intake form here and it can be done too. Uh, now with the new, technology that's evolved and what you all decided to do was to send client a direct email so that way uh, they get to access the link from anywhere uh, whether your client is in dubai or whether your client is in um, you know uh, us or anywhere that they are right so they can just simply access this link and um, uh, probably uh, record their details and uh, post it online. And you are already sending them the link. You just clicked on generate the link and they got an email. <laughs> so you're just gonna simply go into your email and you're gonna um, look for what is, uh, what is what is that your client has received. So you get a copy too. Now you're gonna, you're, this is how your client gets a copy. They can start here and they can start filling in the form. They, I'll just simply add something here, um, okay? So, and I'll use something that's already available to save a little bit of time. So remember your client is filling this form for you and then you are in turn, let's say this was a traffic ticket uh, matter. This client is approaching you for traffic tickets. Uh, one of the traffic tickets that they received recently for red light camera action or something. And how did they hear about you from their friends? What is the photocopy, they, photo ID they're giving you is driver's license. Obviously they have to send you the copy on email separately. We don't allow you to um, you know, put it here or they cannot attach it here to this form unfortunately yet, but um, they are going to be sending it to you. You're going to request them to send it to you on email rather. And let's assume they submit this form quickly. Once they submit this form, they get a nice screen in front of them saying, thank you for submitting the form. Your uh, form has been successfully submitted to your uh, lawyer's office. And then you get an email from you law uh, on other hand saying that you have a client called Kerry Michael. Uh, this is their information. Please go to your EULA app and contacts and verify the rest of the information and start creating the matter. So here I am. Um, in you law already. So I'm just going to refresh it by simply clicking on contact and try to add or uh, write or type Kerry's name. And you see Kerry's name is already here. While I did nothing in the program, I just sent a client a portal link and they did everything by themselves and submitted it online. And I just refreshed the screen and I already have it here. So remember the due diligence when you add the contact or the client information is to do a compliance check for client management, conflict check. You're gonna screen the entire program by clicking on it and the documents get generated. So once that's generated, you can decide or you can see whether there's a conflict or not. If there is no conflict, you're just gonna simply go ahead, click on matter and open a file for this client. So here's the document that we just generated. These are the potential conflicts. There's no, um, uh, there's no conflict exact to the name of Kerry Michael. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and open a matter for red light camera, and um, we're going to have the area of practice assigned to Provincial Offenses or Highway Traffic Act. And uh, if there is any file number from the court, if you would like to remember the cross-indexing I was talking about, if you have a file number, let's say you started your practice in 2022, December, this is your first file. This is something that you have come up with as a file numbering system, the year, the month, and the number of the files. So you wouldn't give a cross-indexing, you can go ahead and do that too. And this is, these are the rates per hour. Those are just flowing in from the settings that I have already entered my rate as 200, my assistance rate as 150. This is for somebody who does billable time. So when they're doing the billable time, they have to ensure to follow these rates here, okay? And um, for flat rates, just don't bother. Whether it's 200 or 500 or 1,000, it doesn't matter. We are gonna do it in a different way. So when you get started, Here's the compliance for a matter management, like how compliance is there for contact or client management, compliance is there for matter management, compliance from law society is there for event, financial management under accounting section. So making sure all of these are downloadable in one click button, but there should be inputs like I already said. You give the input, we give the output. So here to start with, let's say you had a client meeting, and it took you about 30 minutes, that is autofill billable, and then you had some drafting to do, so you're recording it, maybe it took about two hours, and you're going to record the same time, and then the next event, you had a court hearing for this client, and then it took you about three hours, but you decided to do a flat rate billing for them. So here you're charging your client a $500 bill for just that event. So this is how your recording of dockets takes place. And when the recording of docket is done, you can also use timer. By the way, you're starting a meeting with a client, an audio conference or a video conference or in-person conference, whatever. When the client walks into your office or when the client gets on the call, you turn on this timer and it keeps running. And once it's done, once the call or the meeting is done, use pause it and then you, 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 it gets rounded off to the next six minutes you docket it and you give the event title saying phone call with the client, phone call or whatever. So you want to describe anything about, about upcoming hearing or something about upcoming hearing. And then, by the way, you can also record it. You can just talk into the mic. You don't even have to worry about typing each time. And then it gets saved here as a docket. Upcoming hearing about, you know, the phone call. Now, Let's assume you generated a retainer letter. You sent the client a flat rate of 500 is what I want a retainer for. You generate this document, you can send it to the client. It can be personalized, it can be customized. This is what I have generated, but you have various templates. You can also bring in your own template into the program. Uh, you can download this in Word format so you can edit and make some changes. So your client sees that uh, before we begin the work, we require a retainer of this amount and they pay you into your trust account. So you go into trust, since it's money that came into trust, since it's a retainer, you say the client paid me 500, it was an email transfer, so you uh, enter their reference number and then you say, Kerry Michael paid you this and then give them a receipt. So here uh, you get, you are completing the first stage of um, you know, creating a client, doing a due diligence there, conflict check, and then opening a file, entering all the details, and then start recording the dockets. Before that, you determine the nature of the work and send them a retainer letter. And once the retainer agreement is completed or fulfilled by paying this amount, and you record that in the program immediately as we discussed. And when that is done, you have attended to all the events here, you decide to go ahead and complete the file. And then you decide when you're completing the invoice, oops, I had a courier sent to the client. Uh, now, did I um, actually spend for it? Yes, so go to add new disbursement, say that it was from a general account, if you are mostly disbursements are made from general. So let's say this was a courier sent to the client and it was costing you $20 plus taxes. 
And how was it paid from my general account? What did I use? I used my company debit card that day. There's a, uh, there's a card that is given to you from your bank. You use the client card or the debit card from the bank and you've added it. So now you're ready to send the invoice to the client. So write about invoice pending. The first document after the retainer letter that you want to send it to them, you're sending the invoice. You have to always preview, guys. If you're not previewing, there might be any mistakes. Now, to save a little time, I'm going into invoice. So I'm invoicing or finalizing the invoice. Um, so always remember to do a preview so that you are able to make any changes if there are any mistakes before you invoice the client. Now, this is the invoice, final invoice. Again, there are several templates. You can customize it. You can add your letterhead, logo, anywhere here. And then you can uh, design your own invoice too. Everything is available in the program for you to play around with the templates and uh, uh, you know the uh, look of your invoice. And uh, your invoice has all the details about your uh, you know, your dockets, your disbursements, what money they paid you into their trust account, and what is the balance they owe you if there is any. Okay, now you go back in here, simply click on question mark. Remember I said there are two things that you do when you raise an invoice. Number one, if you have money in trust, please feel free to move it from trust to general and generate a form 90. And number two, if you do not have money in trust, you are going to get that from your client, uh, which is client payment into general account. So here I'm doing the first step um, of moving the money from trust to general in the bank for this $500. Then I come back into ULA, record that, sincerely give the check number or the uh, electronic fund transfer number and then transfer it. When I transfer it, I have to download a Form 9A which is automatic. You just have to download it. And uh, Law Society is very happy that you're doing this electronic trust transfer requisition form due diligently for every transaction you do. While that is done, the client still owes you $675.20. Remember, you can get this payment into your general account now that you're done with the work. So try to even get five cents more it will not allow you because the program says, hey, you can only get 65 $20 because that's what is it uh, due from the client. So don't get even a penny more. Um, let's assume the client email transferred you again. So you enter the reference number and then you are going to give client another receipt for the final payment that they made and applied. When they do this, or when rather you do this to give them, it looks more professional and the cycle is also complete where right from the time you got, gave them the retainer agreement to give, uh, they, to them paying you retainer and you giving retainer receipt, starting the work, completing it, generating an invoice, giving them uh, another, uh, getting another payment from them for the balance amount and giving them the receipt for the final amount they paid. So the cycle is almost complete here until they walk into your office and say, or email you and say that, hey, is there a possibility I can get a trust and general ledger for what work you did? Um, and then what was the money that I paid into trust that was taken out? What came into general? What was invoice? Everything is available for you in one go. Like it literally took me five seconds to get this page here. but. This is what the client and the law society wants you to do. The client account name, the matter name, the file number, and what money they got into trust, what was transferred, why it was transferred, um, what was the legal fee, how much did they pay, balance the 675.20. Everything is recorded here for you. So the ledgers are here, the journals are here, the reconciliations are done from accounts, uh, compliance, monthly compliance, we have even put it as monthly and yearly for you. Whatever you need to do on a monthly basis, please just go ahead and download. Let's say for today, clients trust. I'm going to download just for today what has happened in my trust account. You will see all that we did for Kerry Michael here. He paid me 500 into trust and I moved that from my trust to general after invoicing for legal fee and courier fee. 
And uh, if you go into clients, let's say uh, general disbursement. Remember today I disbursed twenty two dollars and sixty cents towards courier fee. You would see that here under that courier fee here. So that is the level of uh, transactions that is recorded real time and uh, the documents are also generated real time. What do you see here? It says Law Society compliance documents. So this is all what Law Society needs you. Suppose when you transferred money from Trust to General, for some reason you forgot to try, uh, download that Form 9A, don't worry, just come into accounts, go to Law Society compliance, go to Form 9A, give the date range and download. Whatever I did for Kerry Michael, move the 500, everything is here again for you. Just have to put it in your folder. And lastly, what I would like to say is all your office expenses, all your uh, business expenditures, everything can be imported by simply connecting to your bank with the program. And uh, or you can also do it manually if you are very comfortable doing it yourself. You can say that I went to Staples today. I bought a printing paper for twenty dollars, and uh, let's say I, um, um, you know, wanted to record that as printing paper. So you can add all the description and say how did you pay for it from my general account. I again used my business debit card. And uh, if you have any uh, description number or invoice number, you can give that and save it. Now you see that under the general account, if you go to the general account, you see the $20 over here under withdrawal printing paper. So try and keep your accounting financial management at the same time your due uh, obligations for professional business, personal conduct, uh, very clear and right from the day one. So there's, there's going to be no way that you're going to mess up with things. That's, uh, that's probably why we call this topic as everything practice management. So I'd like to end the session. I know I took a little bit of time than I promised, like uh, seven minutes more, but um, I'm, I hope I've conveyed the very important uh, lesson here for all of you all to uh, keep intact with all your obligations as professional um, and at the same time uh, carry uh, carry out the uh, you know legacy of using uh, your any tool any method of recording uh, transactions could be anything but um, uh, like I said ULA is a tool that enables you to uh, work from anywhere so Use the program. We give student accounts. We give new entrepreneur accounts. Try and access um, uh, the free trial at least and uh, play around with it. And uh, we expect more uh, legal professionals like you all, the budding professionals like you all, to utilize today's cloud based program like you love. And, uh, you know, you benefit. We get, uh, we are more happy about that and uh, thank you all once again for joining in with um, Harshada and Judith uh, from Oshawa and uh, Brampton campus uh, respectively. Uh, we are more than happy to share this recording with you all. Now I have, um, I, I know we are running out of time, but I just as a courtesy would like to open the floor for any questions, ask me anything. Um, I'm keeping my chat window on. So anything that you all would like to ask me, Shraddha, Judith, I request you to please um, communicate. Um, at the moment, I don't think we do. I think it's pretty straightforward. Thank you mm -hmm. for your presentation. That mm -hmm. was actually very good for me. It was a refresher for me. <laughs> that, that, thank you, Shraddha. I hope I, hope I didn't. Um, right, I hope I didn't scare your students. Um, no, no, but no, 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 no. <laughs> Very capable of handling anything. Don't worry about it. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. We are going on a lunch break now because we are hungry. Absolutely. Me as well. I'm hungry. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so very bye much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye.